morning, church. Um, I was uh, suitably introduced last week by Dan in terms of how encouraging this finance report is going to be. But um, I have actually a great pleasure, and I genuinely mean that, to stand before you um, as a member of the eldership and a member of the finance board and present for you, and hopefully not too boring or too long a, a session, but I genuinely am privileged to be able to stand and, and give us a feedback of what's been happening uh, financially throughout the course of the 2013 and 2014 year. So, um, thanks. This, can you just go to the next slide? This is the thing to be taking. I thought we'd start off with the verse that the Lord gave to us as a, as a congregation. Joseph is a fruitful vine, a fruitful vine near a stream. And if anybody does a study of God's provision, particularly in the Old Testament, it's about water, it's about wells, it's about how forefathers dug and, and, and created those wells and how they would go back to those places and the Lord would provide. Um, I don't think it's a coincidence that God gave us this particular word this year, the stream, because he has certainly provided for us as a church. And we'll come back to the latter part of that verse later. Oops. So, I just wanted to spend some time on governance. No one likes really the word governance. But if I was a member of the congregation, I would want to know that when I put money into that basket or through that direct debit every week, I want to know that it is well managed. So, I thought I'd just mention this again. Um, the church has an eldership, Dan and Amanda, Forf and Ali, myself and Liz, as, as well as it has a dedicated finance board. Now, that finance board meets roughly once a quarter. Um, I just thought I'd mention some of the names. Valdi and Annalise, do you wanna just stand up quickly if you could? Um, I don't know if Helen is here. Valdi and Annalise, Volfi obviously on the finance board. Liz, unfortunately, she, she's not here today, she's in South Africa. Helen on the finance board as well. And then we had, um, unfortunately, Andrew, Andrew who, who left to Australia, he was on the finance board, so we're actually looking for someone potentially who's got a heart to, to look after finances. Um, and then we also have one sort of person who's not from this particular congregation, who was in this congregation, Charles Lux, um, an astute businessman, but just really to challenge us and assist us to look after our funds. So that, that finance board meets roughly once a quarter and just has a look uh, after the finances. Um, we do also have a very talented bookkeeper. I genuinely say that. Dina, why don't you stand up? I mean, you, most of you will know Dina from the front. <laughs> Dina's an absolute treasure in the house. Very rarely do you find someone as good as bookkeeping as Dina, as well as being able to have the artistic talent that she has. <laughs> I don't mean to embarrass Dina, I genuinely mean that. I think it is wonderful. So Dina, you're an absolute blessing in this house. And also Helen, our finance director, who's a part-time finance director, who looks after the numbers, makes sure the management accounts are right, deals with auditors, et cetera. So um, we really do feel that we have the numbers right and well governed. We also then get that independently checked by a group of auditors. Anybody want to hazard a guess how much we spend on an audit a year? How much do you think it costs us? Throw a number. 700. Two grand, keep going. Up. Sorry? Seven, close, we're at six. Six grand for us to be registered as a charity and comply with all the rules and with all the assistance in order for us as, as, a, as a company, as a charity that we are legally in, entitled to. So this does cost money, but it's just as interesting that what, you know, what that sort of costs us. But um, and then I must say, we, we have, in terms of governance, we just break things down like any business would. We just break it down by certain departments, and our departments are, are um, either of our budget holders, uh, kids ministry, campus ministry, uh, what do we spend on property, what do we spend on salaries, etc. Break it down by congregation, but every single item of expenditure is budgeted for. And I must say, you know, I look after probably about 15 different companies from my employers, and if I could get the financial discipline at budgetary time and the cost control that we have at Every Nation London, I must say I'd be a very happy man. 
and so would my employers. The budgetary cost control is very, very good. Obviously, it's headed up by Volfi, signed off by the board, but really it comes down to the day-to-day -day decisions. You know, what sort of cups do we buy? I mean, honestly, what Viennas do we get for that, for that Halloween party? I was actually part of that decision when I had to go to Tesco with Dan. <laughs> a great Viennas, by the way. But I'm saying, it comes down to really, really looking after the pounds and the pennies every day. So really, our thanks as a board to all those budget holders, you know who you are, the executive guys. But I just thought we'd go through some numbers as we did previously, um, looking at the Hammersmith congregation. When I say Hammersmith, I'm including the 6P and by and large there. Um, that might be of interest. 382,000 pounds of tithes and offerings. And I must say, you know, that, you know, we can relativize that against numbers from previous years or whatever, but I would say this, and we'll get down to this number as well, we can be very, very thankful for the wide dispersion that we have of givers in this church. Financial givers, leaders, volunteers, but the amount of people as a percentage that actually contribute to making this all happen is tremendous. And I'd almost challenge any church out there on that particular metric of ours. I can be very proud of this wide dispersion, this wide leadership, and this wide giving pool that we do have. 89,000 pounds collected in gift aid. So when we ask you to fill in the forms and to tick the right boxes, etc., it's because we get that 90 grand back, that 89 grand, okay? Whether you do it online, preferably, whether you do it through the, through the, the envelopes, please, please remember, if you're a taxpayer, a UK taxpayer, to make sure that those documents are completed, we can collect another 90 odd grand. I want to mention this as well. If you're a higher rate taxpayer and you are giving to this church, there's money that you can claim back on that as well. That's just for your own, own gain. The government supports that in two ways. But it just shows you how important that number is to us. Right, 44,600 pounds is our tithe. So that is the tithe. We receive tithes, 386,000 from you. We have tithed a 44,600 pounds our bond. 5% of that will go to, sorry, 5% of, 10% is our tithe, five of which goes into Europe and five of which goes internationally. Okay, so obviously we tithe on the, on, on the gross number there. But that allows us as a ministry, as a worldwide ministry, to start reaching that vision, every nation in our generation. And it's, you know, it's wonderful what happens here locally at a church, but we've got to be able to sow in to what's happening in Europe or on our doorstep. We've got to be able to sow in what's happening centuries so there can be a, a, a literally a worldwide movement and a worldwide vision. We also give another 67,000 to the Central and Apostolic. So from our congregation, we give another 67,000 into a central ministry that, that supports certain central events across all congregations, but it also supports a huge effort, and particularly in supporting Wolf and Ali in what we do in Europe. So we think of Ghent, we think of Dublin, we think of what's going to happen in Belfast, we think of Marseille, etc. There are so many things that happens out of that as well. 22,300 to our property fund. Now we don't talk about the property fund very often. In fact, we might not talk about it often enough. But this is what we've been doing for a number of years. We take roughly 5% of our income and we put it away. We have a vision that ultimately we will not rent. We will ultimately have our own bricks and mortar. Not because bricks and mortar are so important, but because we believe it'll give us a better foothold to be able to serve this community and uh, apply our resources better. When I hear of the, you know, the times that people have got to get up to be able to set up and take, you know, break down and all the rest of it, and you start thinking, what could we do with our own property, the leverage that that could bring? So we continue to, to, um, to save in faith for that property to come. £842 is what it costs us per week to just meet here. Okay. It's just, it's a reality. You know, we've got to rent this place, we've got to put on the coffees, we've got to have transport for the, for the local kiddies and things, but that's what it costs us per week to put it on. So it does actually cost us quite a bit. 
Kids and youth, 14,000 pounds, that's the, non, the non-salary elements of the kids and youth that just go in and I, you know, I am, and I've said this before from up here, I am one of the most blessed people in this congregation to have three kids who absolutely love coming to church on a Sunday. It really is a highlight of their week. And yes, my, my kids are not on the youth team yet, but I know that the youth team are doing an amazing work. So really, this is some of the best spent money. Equally, I just need to clarify this, this is what we spent on the campuses in, when I include the cost of the 6 p.m. Um, but our vision on campus has not waned. If anything, I think as a team, as a local team, as a worldwide movement, we are seeing more and more the importance of campus than less. And really, I think we're, going, we're looking forward to some great work, particularly Brittany, Java, and you know, your guys' leadership. We obviously want to thank Simon, et cetera, and what they've done on campus. But this is going to be a real area of focus for us in the next few years as well. Our overall result, 9,300 pounds, that's a profit, if you can call it that. Um, that's from the Hammersmith and the 6 p.m. overall. If I then aggregate that with some of the support that we've given to the other congregations, um, we've got Slough, and we've got Stratford to a lesser extent, we came out as a every nation ministry to a 7,000 pound loss, and we as a finance group are very, very comfortable to going into our resources, knowing the great work that's happening out there. So it is, it, it, you know, it, this is, more, is, is not so much about making money, obviously, it's not about overspending, it's just trying to be good stewards of what we've got. And I'll end off from this number, if you can see that. 77 tithing units. I mean, I, that's not really a biblical term now, is it? A tithing unit. Liz and I would be a tithing unit. Um, we, we tithe under my, my code, effectively. Um, but I, I come back to what I said earlier. We are very, very blessed to have as many and as wide a group of people that give into this particular house. And, you know... All of this said, and whether we've made a profit or a loss, we've just got to be good stewards, is all really irrelevant. It depends on what we've done with that money. So, two messages. I want to say thank you on behalf of the Finance Board and the Eldership for your giving. We have been a church which has gone over the wall, as per that verse that the Lord gave us at the beginning of the year. But all of that is irrelevant depending on what we've done. So let's have a quick video and see what's happened over the course of the last sort of financial 12 months. <laughs> 